Leia, Nimbus, Pharaoh, Cub, and Cheese. And that roster, that roster's just stacked. Like, that, that's got a couple of New Jersey PR players on it. So, Rutgers certainly the slight favorites here. But, Weimar, again, it's a crew battle. It matters just how good you are top to bottom, not just how good your best player is. So, anything here is possible. Yeah, 100%. You're on the money right there. Uh, and if you know those char you know those players as well, you also know some of their characters. So these lineups, I'm going to be honest, from the commentator's perspective, very fun to commentate, but uh, possibly a little bit cursed on both sides. Uh, you mentioned some of the players, but just to get... I, I mean, you can just look at your screen right now, actually, get a good idea of what we're up for. Ice Climbers versus Kazuya to start things off. That's going to be Diamond versus uh, Kataya. So... And that and this can be a really polar matchup, right, for the Kazuya as well, because obviously Kazuya hits you super hard, is great at separating these climbers and pushing them away from each other, but Icy's, can't, once they get going, are so dominant on the ground and can steal quick stocks away, where if you find that first neutral win, just like they're potentially finding here, it can snowball really fast. Pattaya definitely not immune to getting upset here in this first round. Absolutely, but at the same time, you know, Kazuya, the quintessential touch of death character for this game one electric can do it but there you see the big tool that ice climbers have is you can kind of break out of it with that second climber so pataya is mm -hmm. kind of gonna have to deal with that second yeah. climber before getting in on these touch of death combos yeah, and he's currently the... getting touch of death himself i was gonna say the blizzard wall be saying so incredibly strong because it's just a constantly active hitbox climber unfortunately though you you had Nana get caught there, not Popo, and even though Popo is going to survive, it's going to be the Sopo from here on out. So no more these things to set that wall up. Pataya having not locked down the first dog yet, having to contend with the Sopo, and anybody who knows knows that the Ice Climbers get an infinite power up when it's just this one little climber on the screen. Yeah, really fired back immediately with the hits there. Very well done by Pataya, but is now kind of struggling to deal with the lone climber. Is actually going to get percent looped here needs to find one last good hit to try and get rid. You can see, going for the Gates of Hell kind of consistently, but as is, is only really getting these one-off hits, but that Electric will do it. Now yeah, you've got Rage Drive going into this new fresh stock. And then the I was gonna say, the desync off the grab, right? Finding that confirm, locking out the stock. The fact that, really, it only took two, Pattaya two hits with Sopo to close out the stock, impressive, but even more impressive is the fact that, well, that percent got looped in the first place, so now Diamond having the potential to play here with a full stock lead, something that could make an absolutely huge difference in this crew battle is to get the stock advantage over a character like Kazuya that can just become so polar, right? Snowball the lead, and even if you lock down with Sopo here, you still get your second climber back in the next battle, so ICs do have, like, that kind of potential extra benefit, that extra tanking power here in a crew battle format. Yeah, Pataya doing good, getting through with the rage drive on the right climber, will get it down to a last stock situation. Sitting at 122%, and yeah, it's just going to take an up tilt into an up air to send Pataya down early. Diamond going to take the first game there. Listen, my friend, I mean, ice climbers, right? We're talking about that being polar, but like, ICs just do such a good job. And one of the reasons we saw is it's, you know, as good as electric is, it's hard to hit both climbers, right? And even though the one time it did, yeah, of course, yes, it dislodged the duo, but then you get put in disadvantage against the single one, and that disjoint is still enough at those awkward angles where Kazuya can struggle to get on out. So it's a question of, you know, how can you snowball fast enough, hard enough, that then Ice Climbers just kind of doesn't get to play their game against you? Because as we saw, once they start, it is very hard to stop. Now it's going to be up to the rest of Rutgers A to find this one sock off of Diamond and force in the rest of a very versatile MSU Red lineup looking to make this potential upset. Yeah, I do want to also give a quick shout out to how well Pattaya was doing at separating the two climbers. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that did come up though was because Kazuya has auto turnaround, it always faces the primary climber. And that actually, I think, caused Pattaya to drop. Uh, but now we do have Cheese coming up for Rutgers. Um, Cheese, for those who don't know, is a DDD player. So hammer on hammer going into this next match here. Hey, and you know what, my friend? We're going to answer the age-old question. What's better? Two, two small hammers and a trench coat or one really, really large one? 
because this is a big penguin. He is here. He wants the rights back in the hands of the workers, and he is willing to <laughs> overcome the power of friendship to make it happen. If you, hey, why we, if you've seen the Kirby cartoon, you know what I'm talking about. No, I do. I Kirby right back at you. Like, he's trying to send these ice blocks right back at you. Uh, crazy reference to pull to, though. <laughs> That's my favorite DD re D reference, man. I got. I can't lie. I cannot lie at all. As you already have the ledge trap, this character's strong point, but just not able to keep it going. Now you're a super heavy and a fast roller caught in the vortex here against climbers. That can be a little bit dangerous. But Weimer just not able. To, he's not able to find too much yet, and he's already gonna lose the first stock off that roll. Great coverage from Diamond to build the stock lead further, my friend. He has taken four so far. That's a. That's good work. That's positive. You're going positive on it. You absolutely take that. I think Cheese just wants to find something and get these climbers out of here before Diamond just gets out of hand. Doesn't want to lose another stock to these climbers and trying to do some edge guard shenanigans, but not quite going to get the hammering far enough out there. And Weimer, this is a scary territory oh because you are God. in danger now, potentially of losing this next stock here trapped in the corner against the climbers. The inhale is going to do a great job with that hitbox by right, of separating those climbers, pushing them off, and now you have to get through this this, this squall hammer, through this blizzard wall, and through the icicle, right? Just find a way into the climbers and find that one last hit you need to get these this diamond off the screen before that fifth stock can get taken. Yeah, we're getting down to it now. We are getting a bit more separation between the climbers. 103% on your primary popo. Just need to get a hit. That up B missing is going to be big. Finds the up smash to get Nana, but did not hit popo. And the down air going for crazy. it all that to try crazy. and get that fifth stock. Maybe a little bit uh, reaching a little bit too far with that one. You know, I, I respect it. I respect that you wanted to go out with the swagger. But in doing so, right, you did cost yourself the potential for that fifth stock when it may come back to haunt, bite you. He looked for the kill off that up special, wasn't able to find it, lost the Nana for it, and then just committed trying to find a spike. But with the armor on that up special, it's unlikely it would have worked anyways. So interesting decision making there from Diamond, who definitely had a little bit of a shining time there they're taking four stocks out of the gate and setting up his team excellently here moving forward. Now, though, it's going to be up to the rest of the team to try and find a way through this menace, try to find a way past this big hammer and unlock the rest of this crew. Yeah, I'm interested. It looks like we're getting K going in. Which, looking at the lineup, I'm not surprised by. They're sending a Falco into the DDD, and I definitely don't think that's DDD's best matchup. Uh, very comboable by this Falco. Uh, some nice projectile usage with that neutral special mm -hmm. gun Falco can send out. It, it, it becomes hard for DDD to really get a good answer going against that. Yeah, not not only that, Reimer, but you know, obviously Falco laser putting a hit stun right, sending Gordo back at you is absolutely huge in this matchup as well as the fact that that reflector comes out frame one. You literally cannot send something back to your opponent sooner than that. DDD, as you know, as, as many folks know, by right, that Gordo is the center, that spike ball of his game plan. So, you know, for that to be disrupted as efficiently as a character like Falco can, can be just terrifying. That being said, now that the stock counts are locked and loaded, they're just gonna count them down and we're getting right into this one already. Yeah, obviously already working with that detriment of being down a stock for the DDD. And you can see this Falco is not looking to engage until DDD pulls the trigger. Can very easily play around this extra space with the reflector and the laser only needs one opening to get in. And it looks like Kay has seen it and is trying to go all in on it. Yeah, tried to find the combo, but I like backing off, being cautious with your stocks, especially in a crew format where every single thing matters, and recognize just how polar this matchup is in your favor, Weimer, because now you are terrified, because as easy as DDD is to take stocks off of here as Falcon, oh, well, he's also a super heavy, right? He can also just make you explode off that one wrong mistake, and you know the fear factor is factoring into this one. Yeah. These lasers, though, short hopping, everything all around. It's like it's melee again, but just enough, just tall enough uh, to hit DDD every single time. 
Yeah, this big penguin, right? That big hitbox definitely coming back to hurt him just a little bit. I like the F-Tilt to reset the situation. Not gonna chase it, though. So, gonna get reversal for his troubles. Push to the corner now. And it's gonna be K getting the first stop dropped on his head like that mallet itself. Oh, and now trying to answer back before letting this one snowball. Yeah. I think K just got a little bit desperate. You can see going for the up smashes a little bit that did allow for that extra 27% to get tacked onto this fresh stock, but still obviously does have the stock lead and is getting a good opening on Cheese right now, evening and leading the stocks, going for the down air too, trying to send this penguin, keeping it to a flightless bird. Uh, my friend, this pressure has been just absolutely insane from K when he's managed to find the openings. It's just been a matter of doing so right he's forcing himself into these awkward situations that is giving cheese the chance to find these extra hits and you almost have to wonder if the passive nature with which he's playing right playing defensively he, he and relying on this laser as much as he is is actually giving cheese more openings than he'd otherwise find yeah i mean the lasers are good for nickel and diming uh mm -hmm. cheese percent away but all these extra hits i mean you can see right there just like that we've seen it a couple times ddd can reflect with the neutral b but the reflectors you mentioned frame one for falco and it's not enough of a window for ddd to send the lasers back that'll be a big enough window to hit an up smash though yeah, man, that hammer to the back of the head, that one has got to hurt. And now the juggle into the up air, this one is gonna get a little scary. Locked at the ledge, this one could still go anybody's way. And K put in all the work to try and make something happen, but it might just all be for naught if he can't slow down this penguin's onslaught. Yeah, going a lot for these back airs off the up tilts, just trying to get something to close out the stock before it gets out of hand, but slowly it's slipping. Can Cheese find something here, get it going and get it done? Actually does have to percent lead. Any strong hit can kill here in the oh neutral no. air is gonna find it. He swung with a down out of the uh, uh, air and it was just a little bit misplaced. Just missed the hitbox and the neutral air came out of the gate as a counter hit. Unfortunately, the DI just wasn't on lock. He wasn't expecting the counter hit there. And it was all she wrote. Those mistakes might hurt in a tournament's game, right, in a tournament set. But here in a crew battle where every stock matters and you're causing and it's causing you from going up a stock to down a stock in the crew battle overall, it has got to feel just absolutely brutal for MSU Red right now. Yeah, that puts Cheese at four stocks taken uh, to only two lost at this point. I, I would be interested to see how MSU responds to that. It does seem like Falco was kind of there to be the counter to this DDD, and that's why he came in. You could see in that replay the disappointment on K, and now they're taking a bit more time to consider who do they want to send in against Cheese. If I'm them, I throw, I throw in Yobi right now. Or I throw Narwhal and I throw a Samus player at them because Samus does so incredibly good against King DDD. You have really active hitboxes with things like Forder, you have Missile, you have Charge Shot, all of which just set up a wall that just shuts down Gordo from the onset. And even though they can inhale Charge Shot back at you right now and do other projectiles and that one can get a little scary, you can throw projectiles with the right timings to find the pressure on it anyways and still disrupt that inhale between in right its ability to find those suck and sends right back at you so we'll see if that's what they opt to do here but Rhymer, they definitely still have at least a couple potential options left in the tank absolutely they've got a pretty good team of seven ready to go ready to swap in and step in if needed um we can see cheese sticking to the ddd not going to swap around anything there obviously um it's just the question of who did msu send in to fight we've got one sitting at the table uh, waiting on the tag to figure out who it is. Um, I do like your idea of Samus, though. I do think that is possibly an option. Uh, and it is going to be Obi. It is going to be their dedicated Samus player. Yep, there we go, my friend. The Samus we thought might be coming out is, in fact, here. And as we mentioned, just so, just so many tools, right, to kind of overwhelm this DDD at range can still scrap up close. We didn't even talk about neutral area, right? Yet another move, but it's got that front hit, got that back hit, as a result, an active hitbox, deals with his Gordo, and Samus' juggle game, right, too? Combo game, actually pretty solid. Something 
as you mentioned, like DD being a heavy, but not just a heavy Weimer, also a fast faller, right? So one of the most comparable characters here in the entire game. Yeah, and you can see those quick neutral bees are going to be really good. She's trying to get the call out with that neutral bee reflector on the inhale. I can't even spot dodge it. So the inhale is the primary thing DDD is going to have to rely on here to deal with what you can see is playing just in this mid range, just outside of what DDD can comfortably play in. But catching, as as... I was going to say, catching the movement with an inhale of his own could be potentially huge. That charge by not having enough charge on it. The Find his way through, somehow routing away from the Gordo for just a second. But the timer bombs now, the pressure is just immense. And somehow, regardless of the big body, Cheese has been able to weave through it expertly. Yeah, Cheese has the percent lead still and is almost threatening another stock here somehow. This DDD, possibly the one character you're looking at this lineup and going, oh, I don't think I need to be concerned about this one, suddenly is the biggest concern possible in threatening five stocks. Yeah, King of Cruise for sure here. Weimar tries to find that frame drop and just not gonna lock it down though. And instead have to deal with the DDD ledge trap situation. This one gets scary. But the amount of save hitbox that Samus can throw out on offense, on defense, and anywhere in between just really takes Gordo out of the equation in this matchup. Yeah, you can see playing a little bit safer at this point. Now finally getting some footing. Yabi just needs one more good hit to close this out. Send the Penguin home, but just barely going to be able to work around all these potential kill threats at the moment. Yeah, that missile into charge shot was in a true combo at certain ranges. It wasn't able to find it there. I like the charge shot usage to dislodge that threat of the Gordo on the ledge trap. Tried to set up the bomb into a kill and just wasn't able to find that one either. So Yobi had a couple chances, but the near misses he found are give just enough a margin for Cheese to lock on yet another stock. And fitting in the name, I mean, He's taking all these stocks pretty honestly. Yeah, going counter to the name. Only one more good hit. If he gets another stock at this point, I, I don't want to be picking sides, but MSU Red, you're going to need to figure something out how to put the Penguin down. Yeah, you. I mean, you might. You, I, I think you got to call up a zookeeper at that point and, and figure out something special because this one is getting a little out of hand. Nearly a 200% to drag down to find the reversal here. And a wave looking with Spike 2. That would have been absolutely insane. She was trying to get a little less honest with that one, Weimer. Animal control needs to be sent in. We have a penguin with a mallet finally going to go down to a large explosive. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, I need, I, need, I, I need someone to clip that on, that'll be real, because why I, we need, I think the whole world needs the, uh, the audio bite of <laughs> someone call animal in control, we've got a penguin with a mallet. <laughs> oh man, I mean, you said it, all of those kills were shockingly honest for a name like Cheese, but what a run to go for there. I mean, DDD, of all characters, just took five stocks in this crew battle. Hey, I mean, there's a reason that he's the only character in the game voiced by Masahiro Sakurai, and that is because he is evidently the chosen one here, Weimar, because that is a run and a half, as you mentioned, with a low tier to really open up this crew battle, especially coming from a situation, right, where they started off down a player. Now we're going to throw in Nimbus, who is a New Jersey hidden boss. If you watch the last NJIT event, you will know just how scary he can be here on the Koopa Kid 6. Yep, Bowser Jr., one of those characters that you don't get to see a lot at top level, but if you if you see a Bowser Jr. anywhere in your region, you should be prepared to run. Uh, because every Bowser Jr. is either a hidden boss or like on the verge of being a top tier threat. It's kind sure. of crazy. There's no there, bad juniors. There, there is one third distinction for hidden you But you're either, you're either a PR player, a hidden boss, or you're the Dylan Das, bro. True. Or you're employed. Yeah. But those guys don't show up to turn it Hey, okay, listen. There are literally two Bowser Juniors in, in Connecticut, right? And they are literally a college student who is also number five PR in the state, and there's our former number 10 PR player in the state who is fully employed and doesn't show up to tournaments. So truly, right, back at our home region, at least, Weimar, we've got both sides of the coin for sure. And Tri-State does as well, right? They've got more than a couple Bowser Juniors. They've got Nimbus, obviously Yoda Cage, and Sweshy, right, in Philadelphia, the land of Junior, if there ever was one. Tweak formerly, right, had his, famously had his breakout very, performances. Very formerly. 
on this character way back in the day, right? What I'm saying here, Weimer, is that the Koopa Kids have a pretty storied history here in the tri-state scene, and Nimbus looking to be the next junior to carry on this legacy. And this man does it on... Do you catch those controllers in his lap? Those are Joy-Cons! Uh, jo that's not just a Joy-Con, that's a Joy-Con still attached to... I, is that still attached to a Switch? No, that's the, that's the, the central little controller thingy. I don't know what to call oh, okay. it. Okay, I, I thought it was like the full, the full wide grip. I didn't think it was controller yeah. mount. I would have been like, that's it... crazy. That's a crazy yeah. playstyle. That actually such, would be such an insane controller. You just lock in and you play with the remote online. Already though, you we see one of the best tools Junior has in his kit coming out in that Cooper cart. Just such a good horizontal burst option. It allows you to really utilize these these platforms on this stage, right? Reset from high plus the side blast and let you find early oh! kills just like that, Weimer. Holy moly. God, wow. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah, wow. I used to play this character. I didn't even know you could do that. I mean, up air is kind of, you have two things that you know Junior for, which is side B and up air. And usually it's side B into up air. And Nimbus just made that look like the poultry man's version of the combo by closing a stock with it. Now I'm just looking to slow the pace of the game down, recognizing, hey, I don't have a huge advantage. I need to find a way in on Sam is able to do so with the Mecha Koopa and now just setting up a wall at the ledge. But my friend, that screw attack just so versatile as a get off me tool out of disadvantage and so now you're not able to lock it down nimbus having that set and no matter how good he's been he just has not been able to get out of disadvantage here yeah nimbus hanging on cleanly to three stocks no threat of really losing one yobi i mean did okay at putting down the penguin got put out by the turtle and I mean, honestly, if I look at this roster left for MSU Red, I'm terrified of Bowser Jr. here. Because you're like, okay, well, we've got Samus, we've got Terry, we've got Diddy Kong, and we've got Sonic. One of those Samuses, or that Samus left, might also be a Bowser player. So you have five or so potential characters across four players you can throw out as a counter pick here. The big issue, though, is one of Diddy Kong's biggest strengths X, right? Whatever. It's his burst movement. Sonic's biggest strength is his burst movement. You know, oh, who can do both incredibly well is Bowser Jr. About six right. months ago now, I had a block with, with uh, Dara, and I think Dara put it put it best. This character is just weird world Sonic. He just zips around the stage, back and forth, finds ways to pressure you at range, and then just explodes onto you with some of the craziest advantage states you've ever seen. I think Junior is probably Sonic if the balancing team took a second look at it. Um, the the main differential as well that you didn't point out um, in why, because I think most people here would be saying, oh, go for the Sonic. Sonic's burst is insane. Junior can't contest with that. The one reason why Junior can contest with it is he uniquely has a bit of armor on the side B cart. Um, and possibly for that reason, we're not seeing Sonic. We're seeing Colonel 101, the Diddy player, step up to the plate. Uh, and and this makes right you know some amount of additional sense as well. These are both item characters. Banana can be decently disruptive on the ground, but it is a very polar in its own right because if you cannot control space with that banana, you don't get a flip away. You don't get a reset with Diddy Kong and find those extra chances the same way as you do with the rest of the cast. Yes, you get to chase the Koopa Links better than other characters, but you have to be surgical in your precision. I, and something we haven't talked about yet, Weimer, either. That Koopa cart, right? If you hit the body, you're about 30-30% heavier than if you hit the head. And that can be a world of difference, right? People are always surprised when you see the Koopa wings living to 200% and pass. It's something they can do pretty regularly. And unless you're finding Z-Drop Z Dare with the banana as Diddy Kong, I mean, it can be hard to find some of those headshots with the moves that this character likes to kill with. Yeah, the one generous thing, and part of why Junior's maybe a little bit lower tier uh, than he otherwise could be, is the top head hitbox, as you're referring mm -hmm. to it, um, is slightly bigger. And generally speaking, if you hit on both the armor hitbox and the head hitbox, you will most of the time get the head hitbox. They do give that priority. So Junior, often than not, does take a little bit of extra damage. 
Um, but it's still, if you're approaching from the bottom, it can be difficult. And that does make things like up air chains, for example, a little bit harder. Yeah, I, as well, following aerials, things like that, right? Have to be spaced perfectly. We already see the movement, right, coming out early with that shield pressure off the cart. But the banana are able to get the disruption. The full-on scramble, though, still going to go in versus way, at least for the meantime. But this is just going to be a full-on reset here. As they continue the scramble, these two do not want to back off. These two want to go out of the gate swinging. Yeah, both. This is one of the few times we're going to see three stocks versus three stocks as well. Uh, getting that full reset on the character, Nimbus really has the potential to keep Rutgers' momentum and stop any chance of MSU getting it back. And honestly, Nimbus also here is something we haven't talked enough about, right? If he can manage to hold on to two stocks left here, or even just one stock, just has the potential to run through the rest of this crew battle, right? Keeping three stocks to lock down at six to nine lead is just an absolutely huge margin of error! It's really you bombing in, or sorry, banana off the barrels into the cart, spin out, find the stock. Talk about that crazy heads up awareness to just steal that first one away. Yeah, people like to talk about, uh, you know, what's the best mode uh, of transport to get around town powers. nowadays. The answer is apparently an armored cart because it will beat out rocket barrels that blow up. Yeah, no, he was cooking something there, though. He just dropped his own cart into the, into the, used the platform to cancel his lag, and then just the jab one. He was trying to find some mix and definitely still have the ace of play, getting the read on the roll in into the wand back here. Now having you rock down at ledge, you have to find a way off. You're not going to do it and just like that. That's two more stocks off the table. Why may this has been about a minute? Uh, whoever bought this zoo needs to consider selling because the turtle has taken out, well, not taken out the penguin. The penguin's gone crazy and the turtle's about to kill the monkey. <laughs> Hey, you are right, my friend. This Koopa kid is running away. His parents did not give him too much sugar, and he is on a sugar <laughs> rush right now. Bowser, what you doing there? We talked about your good parenting in the past, but maybe, maybe keep keep the kids out of the cookie jar. Yeah, this is why you send in Larry. You want that blue shell because it homes in on its opponents pretty damn well. Gonna lose that first stock though, but Nimbus threatening to close things out really quickly here and possibly leave MSU with just three stocks to take down a monumental eight. And yeah, the up smash just though by being a little stale, not gonna kill yet with outrage, but the jab caught it ledge. That one will do it if it was gonna find this much good discipline though from Curl to find his way out of dodge. Keep playing at this mid-range. That Mecha Cooper though has been so good for Nimbus. He's been using it as a get off me to disrupt these combos and force Curl to take infinitely more neutral interactions against him than he has to to take a stock. Yeah, gonna find some openings holding onto this banana, but the cart itself gonna lead to the kill. <laughs> You could see in the slow-mo, Larry tried to start jumping out of it to get a combo going, but didn't even need it. I was going to say, if we can get a, a replay of that uh, pulled-up production, I would love to talk about that last interaction there to close it out real quick, because it was so smart or, of the, in the last talk of this game. We'll get there, you know, when it comes through, if there's time. But watch the way that at Nimbus repeatedly played around this banana play. Empty hop, force out the banana toss, and then catch it repeatedly. You'll see it here again. Right, I has the banana in hand and jump. Tries to get to the landing, throws it back to force either the land. You either have to drift back and get hit by banana there because you don't have your own double jump, or you have to land. And the landing is actually what Nimbus wanted because remember, Weimer, when you land, you've got four frames of end lag, and you know what four frames is? That's a punish window. Yeah, people always talk about, um, especially as we're getting into the late game meta of Ultimate. You need to know how to play around items, and I think that's a perfect execution of why. You know, Junior does have a little bit of that advantage already being an items character, but if you know how to play around items, you will be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these kind of characters. And I think we're getting ready for the final match here. Uh, it's going to be Narwhal as the last stand for MSU Red. The Samus coming out here. And Nimbus is trying to take that Samus out back. Trying to find it, but not too much yet. That wand, though, is a lot of extra damage. Weimer, and now the wave land back to platform. I love the reset. Keep yourself at an angle where Samus cannot threaten with her ranged options, because while they can control a lot of space, they are linear, right? So standing at those 45s can be a great way to just, and on those platforms to lock down what the Samus wants to do at range. Yeah. 
doing really good to control space, better than the Samus can, just by using the Mecha Koopa and once again getting another wonderful roll read. Nimbus doing fantastic job here of holding on to this insane lead Rutgers has. Great find there though from Nova, like that, that short hop charge shot finding its way over er, the over the cannonball and the Mecha Koopa from Nimbus, right? One of the great tools that this character has in the matchup blo to block these charge shots, something that normally can go through quite a few of the projectiles in the game. But here, like Dodger Jr. has the tools to contest if you can find a way through. And that being said, finding a way through Melwall, like a player who's been on the up and up here in Jersey, can be a little terrifying. Yeah, this Mecha Koopa, just uh, as you mentioned, blocking shots, being really good at controlling this space, giving Nimbus these windows to get in, and the Mecha Koopa attached while in the forward smash, giving just enough extra momentum to get that Samus out of here. Hey, I mean, this Mecha Koopa's been doing a good job. It's ha given some hugs, too, and this is the situation we were talking about, out Weimer, where we said, hey, can Nimbus find two stocks in that game, he might just be able to run the tables. Now with one stock left, Narwhal gonna try desperately to dislodge this last one. She's been the anchor, the one to hold the whole team together, but now Nimbus is just trying to take... Would this be nine stocks there? I think it might be. It might be, uh, seven. I think it was a one stock game before. No, mm. it was eight. Eight stocks yeah. on one character. Yes, that's insane. Yeah. That's pretty good in any situation for anyone to be getting. I like I like the attempt to swing there, right? Just try and step out of space, lets you get back down the stage. And now the spin out just to get out of the corner. And again, right, Bowser Jr. and the creativity that Nimbus has managed to use these clown carts in, jump out, finds all these mix-ups out of this in every situation, has given him so much extra mileage in this set. And it's really been the X Factor that nobody's had an answer for from MSU Red so far. Yeah, oh, looking for everything with the forward smash, not quite going to get it. Not going to be able to kill in response, but the charge shot will finally put Nimbus down. And you've got one stock left to deal with six more. That being said, and not only six more, not only six more, you've got to run through Cub the Corn, and then you've got to run through Pharaoh the Yoshi, who almost undoubtedly is, is their anchor. Pharaoh, you know... Only notable, right, for his top placings at multiple majors, right, being the last Yoshi standing in North America multiple times at these events, the Yoshi Tech Monster and longtime Tri-State PR player. I... I mean... I think you can do it. Yeah. You can do it, but... That sounds like an average Thursday. That That's a high bar, right? Especially Yoshi's got that double jump armor, you've got to deal with Corrin's sword, and it is going to be Cub. A uh, corn player, occasional commentator here in the tri-state scene, going up against Narwhal. Three stocks to one. Narwhal definitely has the ability to make stuff happen, but uh, I mean that's a tall task for anybody. Yeah, I am of course making a little bit of light. Uh, one stock to deal with six of the best stocks in the region is no easy task for anyone to do, and I think if Narwhal does do it, um. All of that praise we were just giving to uh, to Nimbus and to Cheese, put that away because we have a new uh, crown to give to somebody else for today. Yeah, I mean the penguin might need to crown the bounty hunter if any if we do. When all said and done, somehow MSU Red is the group on top. That being said. You know what they say in showbiz, is Weimer. It's not over until the curtain call ends. And right now, it's going to be Narwhal trying to stave off that inevitability and find a way to force this last player situation. Yeah, here we go. Getting into could be the last game. Maybe Narwhal can hold things out. You can see playing much more defensively than we've even already seen. You kind of have to in a situation like this. You don't have the percent in the stocks to play around with here. No, you absolutely don't, especially when you are a character like Sam is like incredibly floaty. Corrin, one of the best at juggling in the game, that up air so incredibly strong. If you get caught above them, I mean, that is just terrifying indeed. Now pressured in the corner, Cub, in the dangerous situation where you might just lose another stock and add to Narwhal's legacy here and trying to hold, allow her team to hold on. Yeah, really good start here, but you can see even now, 
Just got a nickel and dime, get a couple hits here. You have three stocks to do a little bit more percent, and you don't even need them at this point. You are doing it with your first one. Cub threatening to close things out very quickly here, Ritual. Yeah, the margin for error, as you mentioned, Weimer, is absolute zilch. For Narwhal, she's trying to find a stock, but the Dragon, I'm not gonna find it. it's Mark, the DI wrong, the back air comes in, and the Dragon comes out. That is gonna be it for our first one. Rutgers A taking it over, unless you read. However, good stuff to Narwhal. Definitely got caught in a rough situation. Nimbus running the table a little bit with MSU, but Narwhal definitely put the work in to try and make something happen at the end there. Yeah, it was unfortunately just too little too late, and that is sometimes what you end up with when you get the role of anchor for your team. You know, sometimes you just have to accept that you're not going to mm -hmm. have the best situation to play around in, and that's unfortunately what came down on Narwhal. And it's a little bit unfortunate that it ended up shaking out like that, but Weimer, it was a fantastic time through and through, and it's the start of a fantastic set of crews we have here for you today. But before we do, we're going to give everyone a chance to get a breather. We're going to talk about something coming up in a couple weeks. That is Collision. I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. And so are Zing, Spargo, Cody Schwab, Leo, Axe, Gluto, Moki, Light, Kadoran, and so many more. So register today at StartGG slash Collision. There might be a couple passes left. They dropped some more yesterday. Who knows? Yeah. I, I think they've already all sold out, but you can still show up with your spectator passes. Regardless, if you're not going to be able to, Collision Series TV, you're watching us on Twitch right now. You'll see the VODs of that on YouTube, and of course, follow everything live on their Twitter. That is Collision Series TV Twitch, Collision Smash on Twitter, and Collision Series on YouTube. Hosting the event, hosting Collision, obviously. Great, absolutely great team to work with. And speaking of things you can do to support Collision, you should every single Monday head on down to Rahway, New Jersey, and check out Fusion. This is Collision's weekly series, streamed here on Collision TV and advertised over on Twitch. It, they've got 6 p.m. Um, doors open, 7 p.m. bracket. They've got rotating side events, a whole arcade, and some fantastic people if you have the ability to make it out, there are few places I can recommend more in or out of the FGC to spend your Monday nights at than Fusion. And finally, another weekly, if you're still looking for that grind for collision, Xeno Weeklies. This is over in New York City. Um, 21 Ludwell Street for anyone in the area. It's every Wednesday. Venue fee of $8, entry fee of $7. You can catch that at House of 3000, another lovely production company to work with. You can check that out at StartGG slash Zeno to sign up for your bracket this week. Or, and you can always find their stream, which I learned the other day. You can always find the House of 3000 stream at smash.stream. I didn't know that, actually. Me neither. It's a little go. bit of hidden tech from then. And speaking of a little bit of hidden tech, my friend, we're going to do the oldest hidden tech in the book and take a quick break, give you guys an opportunity to get some water, use the restroom, and lock back in your seats for the next of this crew battle extravaganza. See you in a minute.
Hello everybody, what is up and welcome back to the College Cruise Playoffs here at NJIT and brought to you by Collision. I'm Ritual, joined once again by Weimer. Yeah, we, we figured out, I finally figured out which way to play on this thing. I don't know which, if I do this. Oh, yeah, hey, I got, got it. it. Okay. Hey, I, got I wasn't it. sure I was going to be right there. <laughs> don't worry, I never am, my friend. I never am. But you know who is going to be right today? It's going to be one of Ramapo, A, and Rowan Gold. Two col more college crews coming at it. Going, coming up here to go at it in the playoffs. And it is going to be a banger. There are some very saucy characters here. Some of which we see commonly. And some of which... We really don't. Yeah, it's a it's a bit of an interesting mix of um, meta and I almost want to say anti-meta versus not meta at all. Um, it's 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 a unique lineup for sure. I mean, there's Pits, there's Kirby's, there's Robins, there's Sora's. There's a lot of Wario I'm seeing. So Wudo's hey, fans stay hey, winning. Don't 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 just sell it on Wario. Don't just say fans because one of these men on one of these crew battles. He's none other than the New Jersey legend himself. In fact, the Smash legend and Valentine's Day's favorite Smasher. Ramapo College has got BD Bean on their roster. God, I wish BD Bean was real. <laughs> but unfortunately, that. it's not, and that's a yeah, fake spot. So they're down a player today, actually, I think. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's not gas the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, BD Bean is real, and BD Bean is here to play Wario and B Sorty as it's written in our notes, uh, against the competition. We'll see which one ends up coming out. There is another dedicated Wario on the team, which, how often does that happen? You and there's one Wario on the other players. team. As, and there's one on the other team as well. Yeah. JC there's, also There's might. a lot of Wario, is what we're getting at here. Mm -hmm. What I'm, I'm most excited for is, all I want today, all I want today is for BD to knock go Wario, to lock in the new sorting, and to go up against, I want BD Bean versus Greg, and I want, and I want Arsene on his tertiary snake versus Hunter. I want the snake ditto, and I want the me sorty me gunner ditto fight. If, That's if what I get, want. If That's we get I the want. snake ditto, I will be genuinely shocked. Uh, if, but I'm here for it. I'm here for it. All I'm saying is, if, if we can get the snake ditto rigged, you have two commentators who play snake. We both play snake. So we will be able to give high insight on there that. There are three commentators in Ultimate who play snake, Weimer. Can you name the third one? Uh, nope. <laughs> not off the top of my head. I'm not ready for that one. It's, it's Sai from Ohio. Interesting. I did not yeah. know that, actually. Yeah, Sai Sink cooks, as I found out this past weekend. But you know who else cooks? It's going to be JC versus Rosie K here coming up out of the gate. So that's we're going to be starting off with some Wario action. Versus... Likely Aegis, but also potential for Wolf. So Rosie having a couple characters who's in the back pocket means that while they might having sit down, having already locked in their character, know what their matchup is, we gotta wait just a couple more seconds to find out. There it is. It is the Aegis, which does not surprise me, as uh, I think even is still reflected in the most recent tier list. Aegis is pretty good. Aegis is, is one of the best characters in the game. And this character, especially, right, very, like, commonly held to do very well against Wario, right, that big sword and the speed just so good at overwhelming this character in the neutral game. However, if you put them off stage, then that does flip just entirely on its head. That being said, Roji already coming out of the gates with some fast pressure and really forcing JC to just try to space everything perfectly. Not being able to find it has just been, you're locked down in the corner eating 60. Yeah, this is what Aegis is good at. Those quick hits that combo into each other. A lot of nice clean hits and a parry into even more of this Mithra damage. Wonder when we're going to see Pyra come out, because we're getting near that percent where she can start closing out the stock. Yeah, but you want to—you don't want to switch in neutral, right? You want to make sure you have a dedicated advantage stage so you're not going to get punished on it, especially with a character who can get in on you as fast as Wario can with that fantastic aerial drift he has in his back pocket. It. We've got the neutral air now to close it out, and there's that pilot switch who's going to toss the bike up in the air and stay locked down. You're swapping back over to the myth of it just to, to rack up some more damage as fast as possible. Yeah, we've gotten first blood here in this crew battle going the way of, I I think it's uh, Rosie. Uh, scoreboard 
just updated. There we go. Yes, in the way of Rosie. Um, yeah, really good start here and keeping it going with this second stock of Wario too. And uh, JC has just tried to find any way back down, but Rosie has done such a good job um, keeping that those, that Aegis's feet planted, right, and staying underneath this Wario to keep him juggling, keep him up in the air, and ping-ponging him around is now down throw, not gonna be able to find the up air there, so just instead, right, resetting after the juggle, I like the switch off, just willing to play neutral here with Mithra, even if you sacrifice the ability to find that read for the raw kill power. Yeah, absolutely. Um... We can see that Waft is now on deck for the Wario. We'll see if we get a chance to use it. Kind of seemingly having some trouble for JC to open it up. As I say, though, the down tilt into dash attack. One of the most common kill confirms for Wario, especially if you're not looking to use that Waft. Oh, no. Hold on. We've got the chain starting. Are we going to see it come out? I mean, double layer into double up air, my friend. That was a Waft confirmed potentially online, but instead it's just going to be mi Mithra, not Pyra, up air you off the top. That is not something we see every day, but without the DI on lock, it's what we're going to see here today, as now JC on the last potential stock. She is fighting for any way into the back into this one. Yeah, it's not the most fantastic spot to be fighting back from but one good hit and you can at least take that stock before losing your own get the ages down for one stock whoever comes in next can clean that up pretty easily oh. Are we gonna get because no. there's something else in the back tank but now it's going i was gonna say the walk was there but the first couple frames of startup without that armor is gonna be the big difference maker jc trying to pull the trigger and find find a way to at least lock down the stock but rosie with the heads up play, managing to hold on, not even take that one, and now having a potential to lock up a two stock lead here. If she can find her way back to stage, yeah, barely able to get the grab out in time to avoid the deadly wasp, which absolutely would have confirmed it. Now, JC kind of scrambling to take this stock any other way, not looking too great at the moment as losing the bike to get back. And that's going to be pressure that you're going to lose gonna cover the jump up from ledge with the forward air and that will close out JC. And so this is gonna be Rosie K running the first game through all the way and now it's gonna be up to who from Rowan can come up next, replace JC and keep things going. They've got a snake, a character I think does very well against Aegis in their back pocket. They've also got a new gunner, a PT slash hero boy, a good ninja, and a zero suit Samus. Yes. Definitely some interesting matchups because on paper it might just be Snake that does the best against this year Aegis. However, do you want to lock in a character with this high at execution gap and thin margin for error as Snake in a crew battle this early? It's hard to tell. Right. I'd almost think you'd want to keep that Snake as an anchor. You know, one of the heavier characters in the game, able to switch between offensive and defensive playstyles on a fly. One of the most versatile characters as long as you can play it smart. So I feel like that's maybe one you keep in the back pocket. Uh, potentially send in your PT, your hero, your gunner, or Greninja instead. Or your ZSS, you do have that as a back pocket option as yeah, well. Yeah, I was gonna say, the ZSS might be the sleeper pick we're looking at here, right? Because that character has the movement to contact as, as Mithra. Uh, to move around her and dance and turn she has the ability to push you off stage and because it's there actually it's a really low commitment option to dink aegis just far enough away from end ledge that they can't make it back right it's not always about putting them in the blast zone it's just about making sure they can't grab onto that ledge and hold on to their stall. yeah and you can tell roan is taking the time to make this choice too uh giving <laughs> ramapo ample time to pose for the camera have some fun Yo, uh, do you see that man on the left? Do you see that man on the left, Weimer? That is that is our that is our mythical legend himself, Bradley Bean. The one and only. I wish you were the one and only. Getting getting as many as many pictures of the family as possible. Want to remember the vacation for later. Oh oh wait, are we getting the close up? Yo, the beanie, the beanie, the beanie, the beanie, the beanie, the past the camera I don't, shot. I don't have zoom on these cameras. It sucks. <laughs> Oh, no. simply, just simply I would to totally get the BDB simply, camera simply right now. tell Brad to come up to the camera for the bit. <laughs> uh, damn, I wish I could we do it. We have hijacked the player cam. <laughs> we have the, the player cam for the sake of BDB fan cam because we know here in Tri-State we know what the folks at home want. Yeah. 
Man, Rowan, okay, Rowan finally getting their answer up to the table. I was concerned for a second. That was taking a bit. Uh, can we get any idea of who this is? I don't know yet. I'm trying to see if the shirt gives the insight or something. I don't think it does. The shirt says pajamas. That's that's about all I got. Uh, this is this is Sauce. That's who that is, and that is the Pokemon Trainer Hero player coming up to this, coming up to step to the ring. Well, I mean, I think we might be seeing the PT come out here. I think this is another character that can do decently here against Aegis. As right, you've got Squirtle to contest the movement speed. You've got Ivy Sword to contest the swords, and obviously Lockdown Offstage. Plus, you've got that Charizard to hold on to those stocks just a little bit longer. That being said, Hero not off the table either, and until we lock in, we won't know who we're getting, but it does look like it's going to be time to be the very best, like no one ever was, lock in this Pokemon trainer, and get to the races early. Yeah, but as we know, Mithra, a very speedy character, good at combos, so to catch them will be your real test, and to train against it, that is your cause. Rowan, stepping up to the plate with Pokemon Trainer, let's see what we can do against this Aegis. And Saw's now coming on out of the gate, right? Like, knowing, hey, Rosie's gonna be down a stock, we've got a good advantage here, we can definitely start the Squirtle and keep our pressure going. And it's gonna be about that early combo, but one of the things to watch is just how early you're likely gonna see the switch to, to Ivysaur. It might just be off that first advantage state, because Ivysaur, one of the most efficient characters in the game at, at ledge trapping, edge guarding this here Aegis character and so now it's just going to be a matter can you find the way to push them off stage because once as long as those feet are on the ground you are at a disadvantage in this matchup yeah all oh, fantastic neutral air there unfortunate angle for ages almost impossible to get back from and that's a great start not even having to swap off the squirtle I, i've noticed every pokemon trainer kind of has their own distinct way of going about characters. There's no two PTs mm -hmm. that swap at the exact same time or have the exact same combo routes. And you can see that coming out here with Sauce, who's definitely playing a little bit saucy at the moment. Yeah, that was such a great find, such great awareness of how Aegis wants to trip back to stage. I like the switch to Ivy Star there, just to find that mix up with the tether, recognize that we just can't really go off to edge guard you, so she's gonna lock in that ledge trap, and so that hanging with the tether can just provide you the extra flexibility to find your way back. That being said, here on the pirate, Rosie knowing her time is sticking down and looking to try and steal a quick old stock away, maybe hit you with a little bit of cheese. And Weimer, I mean, she's th this change in pace of play, this change in moveset is really helping her out here early on. Yeah, as you know, Pyra does have the slightly bigger hitbox on the sword that's just enough to catch out what is also a slightly bigger hurtbox on this Ivysaur as compared to the Squirtle. Gotta be really careful with how you're playing here. Does manage to get back to ground only to get scooped back up to the sky. I'm gonna opt to swap back into Squirtle to build up some more percent on this Mithra. Yeah, but the downside of Squirtle, right, is you are incredibly light. And all it's going to take is that one advantage state in turn now potentially to back up the damage. This is already kill percent. You could have seen a switch there into an upper. That would have been a stock had it been found. But instead, sticking with the mist right here and getting the damage out from Jab Lock, that's going to be it. And it's going to be Sauce viewing this one back, right? It got a little out of hand early. But, Weimer. Sauce managing to play a little saucy and reel it back in to even. So now it's going to be up to Rowan Gold. Or sorry, it's going to be up to Ramapo to figure out who they send in next to counter this Pokemon trainer. Yeah. I, I think I was maybe picking up on it in that second stock for me. Sauce seems to be a Squirtle player, which is not the common one you, you see for Pokemon trainers. A lot of people no. like to opt towards that safe Ivysaur. Some people who are Smash 4 vets love their Charizards, but Squirtle is the one that almost seems to always slip through the ranks here. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you. Squirtle is kind of the rarest Pokemon we see as someone's specialty. It's normally, as you mentioned, we see that Ivysaur, we see that Charizard come out, and then those players generally have the Squirtle as their second strongest Pokemon, right? The one that they're using to rack up damage, and then they switch to their preferred character for kills, but Seeing that with the Squirtle all the way through, really showing you some of the more advanced stuff that this character is capable of is so incredibly strong. Also, why not we gotta talk about this? Pajamas? No, this is this is my pro gamer official uniform. I, I need a I need a jersey like that expeditiously. I think we should just be handing that out at Smash events, because the amount of people who would wear that 
I mean, there's enough people. There's enough people who do that. You know what we need to do, Weimer? We need to buy Mars that shirt. <laughs> I mean, this is this is reminding me. Um, when we were interviewing Witness for the AK doc, something that ended up on the sure. cutting room floor. I'll give a little bit of insight here for the AK doc. Um, Witness had this fantastic story about the first time he met AK was at a St. Louis local. And the description he was given was the guy with the pajama pants. Hey. That applies to most people at locals. So many people were just in. It, I think it took, <laughs> according to him, like six or seven tries before he found the right person with pajama pants. <laughs> hey, that guy with it's 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 like walking. I was gonna say it's like it's like walking into a, into a smash event and being like. Hey, that dude over there. Yeah, right. You exactly. gotta be a little more specific. It's like walking into a Smash event saying, oh yeah, you're looking for the Steve main. Everyone's well, got the pocket Steve nowadays. That's true. Or it's like or it's like walking into Melee and being like, hey guys, I'm looking for the Fox player. <laughs> yeah. All this to say, pajama pants? To be pajama expected. pants? I, those don't look like pajama pants to me. Pajama production, pants? Production, awesome. Can we get confirmation on whether he's wearing pajama pants? The commentators want to know if you are wearing pajama pants. What? The commentators want to know if you're wearing pajama pants. No. No, no, no pajama not. pants. No. Those oh, are they're jeans. jeans. They're jeans. <laughs> that is a bold choice, I must say. Well, how do you, how do you sleep in jeans? I must know. Oh, my God. They are choosing your time. All right, what we got? What we got? <laughs> um, Weimer, would you ever sleep in jeans? I have once, not intentionally, and oh my god, is it uncomfortable. Hey, I'm right there with you, my friend, but Sauce, maybe not trying to sleep in jeans, but rather put his opponent to sleep in jeans here as the battle of these jean-wearing smashers is going to go on up. We've got Ramapo College sending their next player to the table here. And we will find out who they bring to the table in just a second. Rocking the jersey. If any time to be rocking the jersey, now is the time to do it. It is your crew battle, after all. You got to rep your college. Hey, man, the swagger. And we're getting the replay on this? We got the replay on the jeans? Come on. Come on. Hey, Weimer. Listen, we all need a little bit of, of a good gene play in our lives, okay? We just need a little bit of some gene replay. Gotta check out that thread account. You know, make sure that there's some quality happening over there. Well, anyway, coming in, stepping into the ring, we've got Arsen, the Robin Sora Snake player, going up against uh, the current member of Sauce. And we're going to get the rarest of these three characters, at least on a broader scale, here on our screens. I'm excited for it. Weimer, I don't know about you. Seeing Robin gameplay on our screens is always a treat. This character is so incredibly cool. Yeah, it's very rare to see any amount of Robin play nowadays. Um, I genuinely can't think of a single Robin player off the top of my head. Oh, I can think of, I can think of like six, but I know well, too many Robin players. Yeah, you're also that person who knows, you name a character and you've got like 40 people. I was going to say, it. you've got Infront, you've got Synergy, you've got Nagia, you've got, oh god, I'm missing like half of them. You've got Arsene, you've got, uh, well, that's four. We'll get, I'll get you the other two at a later date in time. Okay. Um, I, I'm, but right now we're already seeing the, the re-grab healing all that percent back, racking up some in turn, kind of stemming the bleeding a little bit, but Sauce able to keep the damage going on his own. Now these resources are starting to tick down for, from Arsene, and that's something to keep track of, of Weimer, because you can only get back a set amount of times. Yeah, and these, uh, these back hairs want to keep you going, is finally going to work around them. Going a little bit lower than usual does get back, but only a couple more Elwins to work with. Might want to use the Rapid Jab to kind of get that out, and refresh it a little bit. But now we're back into this fun little neutral game where Robin is going to be charging a lot of spells in front of him. And, you know, we used to think of Robin as an incredibly slow character, but this character's air drift is locked and loaded. 
it, I like, I like, like, just the pressure there, get off me, reset, trying to find some damage, now the Levin Sword online, so that's where your kill power is gonna be found, and you still have the potential to steal the first stock here, looking for a confirm, but just not able to do so, means that we're gonna reset back to neutral once again here at kill percent, and Weimer, this next stock might, or set, interaction might just be the stock here. Yeah, really did a great job pulling that stock back, it looked like Arsene, was kind of on the verge of losing it uh, pretty early on. Sauce had a lot of momentum going and is going to confirm that stock before going down. But really good job at bouncing back here for ourselves. Okay, now racking on the combo, racking on the damage, but great DI mix there from Arsene to for, to prevent going off stage. Still gonna get put in the blender here as Squirtle, the re-grab was fantastic. Like, not gonna find the trip chance, but no problem there, and now going all the way down, Robin can't get back from that down low, and just like that, Weimer, we're already in a last stock situation. Yep, Ivy Sword down air, it's an incredible tool. It's been known from the beginning uh, that it's it's one of the better ones for spiking, but man, that just goes and shows it, doesn't it? And now, Arsene, back off stage again, really struggling to get footing with this Robin here, this game. Yeah, but oh. hey, my friend, that might be all you need. Unfortunately, going a little too far down. This is not Limbo, and Arsene is going to pay for that mistake. Because uh, how low can we go? The answer is just a little too far. Yeah, really well played by Sauce there. Opening up on every opportunity, keeping Arsene in an uncomfortable position for the vast majority of the game. And, I mean... Most of those were just due to Robin being off stage. That was a lot of why that game went the way it did. Yeah, but coming up next, right, we've, we're going to find out, not the second player, but the third player now, sitting down against Sauce. He had, after getting to go in to clean things up against Rosie, take two stocks. He's now on five and counting here, Weimer. Only one left in the tank, but as we saw from Nimbus, just a set of a crew battle ago. There is a lot of work you can put in with just one stock in your pocket. Yeah, absolutely. You want to be able to do whatever you can with this. And I think we're going to be able to see it without too much issue. Sauce really locked in that game. Really didn't seem that uncomfortable at any given point. Even when losing the stock, even when playing on the back foot, it always kind of felt like Sauce was holding the momentum there. But we'll see how Antoine can do to shake that up. Uh, Anton coming in to lock down the Wario, the start of the Wario gauntlet here for, well, Ramapo College as they try and figure out, find a way through this Pokemon Trainer Menace. Once you do, you've got a whole lot of speed to stay with in the pot, right, right? and keep finding, moving on forward, so there's a lot of work here that you potentially have left and not a whole lot of speed diversity we're sending so we're gonna start with anton and how do you feel about sending wario here um well wario is one of your two remaining options because you have both antoine and bdb um as the wario players on this team i do think it's not a bad choice because yes it's a little awkward to be playing into the wario on a one stock game However, you're probably going to need to do that at one point anyway, and you can play it as a very safe pick into the next person to come up. So if you're confident that your Wario can take the first stock without losing one, you're going to be setting up a three stock versus three stock game, which is really good for Wario, and that can work pretty well into almost anyone remaining on Rowan's team. Especially, you know, you have that one stock as well, right? Wario, a great character for these crew battles, because if you can't find that stock out of the gate, you can just slow the pace down for two and a half minutes, get that waft, and find an X factor, right? Resetting the waft charge there, as you kind of should do, though you don't always have to here in these crew battles. But already getting saw in the Whirlpool combo that double down air reset doesn't work on the cast, but does work on Wario, and 70% out of the gate is just an absolutely brutal start for Sauce to have against Anton here. Yeah, nearly going unpunished too. It looks like Sauce is just going to take that and run off the stage with it. Antoine, though, getting a little bit better footing, going to start being able to swing back, and you can see as soon as he does, the Ivysaur coming out, not wanting to deal with the threat of what Wario can output in the air. 
And it's not just the threat either, but you don't want to get caught here on that squirrel and potentially lose that first that stock a little early, right? Every single hit you can get here in a crew battle counts. Wymo, you're trying. It's not a game. It's not about winning always. It's about just finding that stock. And you can see, right, Anton on is tr having to jump around for get back and give it give some space to sauce because he wants to try and find a way to hold on to three stocks and he's not gonna that up smash gonna scoop you out catch the platform landing and allow sauce to continue his reign of terror yeah sauce doing a really oh, no. really good job of stuffing a lot of problems here has antoine still juggled has not touched ground yet and he still hasn't. Weimer's finally gonna get down on the platform there. Already burning the air dodge, but gets back down the stage again. Having to scramble now. The half waft online, so that's gonna be a little bit. But you have one air dodge lead away, potentially from losing that stock to the vinyl whip. Able to reset again. And now Sauce potentially having disaster strike as he catches onto the bike, getting pushed into the corner. This is Anton's opening to find the stock. Yeah, Antoine, really good pressure with the shield there, using the bike in both sides to put some pressure on it. But Sauce only needs one more good hit and can send Antoine down to a last stop to be huge here for Rowan. Antoine doesn't want to let that happen though, but he just keeps getting hit by these massive down air spikes. Wow, the bike almost brushing you on the drive-by off stage to close it out. I like the idea on the command grab, the jab though. Now it's Charizard online and... You might not be able to take all three stocks here of your sauce, but you want to get that second one and you're going to do so. This is huge mileage. Once again, one player in the middle of the back is running the table for these college crew battles, making all the difference to open it up. And now, Ramapo is going to close it out off the bike, hitting the tether, but going to have to do so. Down three stocks. Weimer. That was worst case scenario there for Ramapo College. It wasn't quite worst case. You could have lost all three, uh, but you definitely lost more than you wanted to there. You can see the consolation coming up being like, hey, it's all right. You're good. Don't worry about losing the stocks. It's OK. Did manage to finally secure it out in one of the most comical fashions possible with that bike. Um, but not how you wanted that to go at all for Wario. So, all right. Rowan now has to send up their next member. And you've got a couple decent options into the Wario here. Especially since the Wario Gauntlet, as you put it, could be coming up after. Yeah, my friend, the question really is just as to what can you possibly send in right now if you... If you're Rowan, right? You've just had Sauce run the tables, but now... Your options are very non-traditional left here in the in the tank, and we're gonna find out which one we've got coming up. It's gonna be Asparza. Uh, she's gonna be going up with the Zero Suit Samus here, and this matchup can be real weird. It's Apsara, Apsara. Apsara, thank you. Yeah, it can definitely be a bit of a stranger matchup. Uh, the up air strings that ZSS gets, a lot of the a lot of the power behind those aerials can do a lot of good damage. As I say it, you know, we're almost going right into it. So we'll see what Antoine can get done. Hopefully at least one stock before you lose your own. That's the best that you can hope for. And anything beyond that is just great job. Uh, looking for a way to find the pressure, the reset there, now the grab coming up, but not gonna find it. So getting pressure in the corner, or, and Anton on, with barely a stock left in this one. It's just gonna be the boost kick that could do it across stage, but not here on Pokemon Stadium, right? So wide, so much distance to cover, you're gonna hold on just a little bit. And now getting that boost kick staled as well means you might have an opportunity to steal a stock here after all. Yeah, some good ledge pressure here using the bike, but every time these two go head to head, it is ZSS coming out with the extra hit, and that is going to be the final hit needed. That back are going to send Antoine into the stands. We'll see who comes up to take the place. And it looks like it's already actually been decided. My guess is that's going to be uh, Vernius coming through, the pit, dark pit Kirby player. Yeah, with Pitt, Kirby, so many things coming up here potentially, but instead, no, that looks like a Bradley Bean coming up. Am I Weimer? crazy? Yeah. Okay, that is I'm a crazy. BB Bean sitting down. So, who knows? I'm are, we gonna see, are we going to see... Are we going to see... Yeah, Upsara lock in? 
against the Wario Menace continuing down? Or are we going to see Bradley Bean lock in the famed me sword fighter and really show you the rarest character in Ultimate's meta at its potential? Yeah. Uh, I, I'd be interested to see if the sword fighter comes through here, uh, considering that Antoine did not do great with the very little time possible into that uh, Apsara ZSS. So we'll see which one it goes with. Arguably the best player here in North America, though. Oh, BD, with the character, right? BD being one of the top Wario's out there for sure, but not gonna lock it in. He's gonna lock in the other flavor of Wario, rocking his main's hat here on the Me Sword Fighter, showing you off that Shuriken Power Thrust combination he's become so known for here, and going to try and find a way to utilize this sword, utilize this disjoint in the three stock battle that we so rarely see, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, I do like this choice of picking the Swordie into the more close up brawler. And you can see already a lot more confidence on this character too, using those shurikens to slip in some extra poke, getting those nice forward airs in to try and just barely space out this CSS. And both players playing very comfortably around this neutral face. And BDD's ability to try and trap your landings from mid-screen, utilize the shurikens, plus find some safe shield pressure with some well-spaced forward airs has been really strong. Right? It forces ZSS, she doesn't get to operate at the mid-range she wants to fight in, nor, at the cl nor close enough to really scrap with some of her CQC hitboxes. Is, is Me Swordfighter has just enough range to force her to play at this awkward blind spot in her mid-range, and is just putting in so much work already. Yeah, and you can see those links trying to get the up airs out here. One of the best kill moves on Me Swordfighter. And every time you're off stage, just a little bit extra poke with a quick little shuriken. Not enough to kill you, but enough to disrupt your recovery. Yeah. I like the jabs, I like the jumps, I like the dancing around. BD being there, even sneaking in a shuriken to force the pressure off of him. And the up smash to secure that pressure reversal into a stock. He is playing so disciplined right now, but one miss input is going to put him back in a scramble. He's not able to continue this advantage state just yet, Weimer. And the pressure now, though, racking on Apsara, who is trying to just get anything started. Yeah, I want to give a particular call out. We've seen it a couple times. BD Bean's mm -hmm. usage of the down B here. It's being used as both a gap closer and a gap maker. Yes. Uh, very versatile, able to get in and whiff punishes just like that. But also we saw it at the ledge, let BD Bean get control back of center mm -hmm. stage without having to deal with that ledge pressure sequence as much. And the last secret as well, Weimer, is that that shuriken at mid-screen combos into that power thrust that certain presents to you. So BD has the ability to just find some extra pressure and rack on a whole lot of damage. And against a character like ZSS, who can cover a bunch of space with that pivot cancel left tilt like we just saw, like that grab, but also is just going to kill you later, can, and that can make the world of difference, right? When you just get to contest the character who wants to play a mid-range with a mid-stage kill confirmed just like that one. Yeah, it's such an uncomfortable space for the CSS. You can see it constantly coming up. All these places where Apsara is maybe able, able to get his air through, but nothing more than just a little bit of that tether and can't really follow up on it because BD Bean is able to recover in time and get just enough out with one of these aerials. Yeah, BD Bean trying to close this gap, right? It was a full three stock, a full player difference that Absara had managed to kind of put Ramapo in, but now BD Bean looking to just erase that deficit entirely, play this one back to even, and at 162, has, still has the potential to hold on to the full stock, but they're back here catching the DIing in. That one's not true, but don't tell BD Bean that because he just lost his stock to it. Now having to go down one, un un and at least Absara locking in the we will move into the next character, still with at least a slight lead here in this crew battle. It's never true until you're the one getting hit by it, then it's the best true combo in the game. Um, BD Bean, though, doing really good with these down beats, making a lot of space with them, getting this ZSS into even more uncomfortable situations, closer and closer to the blast zone. It is getting staled, but it is making space. Also, that down air there, utilizing the landing to catch you at the weird hitbox angle to find that pressure. Super smart from the star, find the back air off of it to boot. Now BD being caught in a scramble, trying to find any way to close this out. ZSS going to die to a strong breeze here, but not that shuriken getting that backwards momentum when she got hit, just pushing her far enough away to avoid the power plus, but not the F tilt, the cutlass carving through the competition. BD being going to lock that one down, only losing a stock and setting his team up about as well as possible, moving in to these last couple players. 
Yeah, really, really nice situation to find yourself in after what was a pretty bad start to this. Looks like there was an opportunity for Absara to just take BD Bean down as well and make it three stocks to six, but no. Fantastic play by Absara getting it, uh, sorry, by BD Bean, um, taking out Absara and getting it to five stocks to six. Hey, I mean, listen, you know, it's entirely likely that Ramapo got here, and by got here, I mean got to this crew battle literally because of BD Bean, right? This man, the carpool fanatic. Ick. But not only are they trying to get here, they're trying to get because of BDB, and they're trying to get what comes next. And all I'm saying is sitting down with a smile, walking in, it looks like Rowan is, Rowan has two players left, or three players left in their tank here, I believe. No, two. They've got Gray, and we haven't seen Gray yet. We haven't seen Sickle yet. And we also haven't we, seen Hunter. I was going to say, we haven't seen Hunter, but there's only five stocks left. There is one player they are not going to send in to this crew battle. The question is who, because Absara listed as the alternate means that one of that main roster not here right now. Yeah, and it's gonna be Gray as the one we see. The me gunner up against the me sword fighter. I did it. I got I got my wish, Weimer. I got my wish. Got one of them. Are you ready for the weirdest matchup of Smash Bros you have ever seen? I suppose I have no choice but to be. Ian. I am excited because Me Gunner, this character, my friend, this character's got some sauce. No, sauce already went. <laughs> yeah, but but he's but he's on Rowan, so they still have sauce. Oh, true, 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 true. Yeah. No, Me Gunner, uh, one of the crazier characters in the game. I think by far the name that most people would know at the moment is. Um, oh, I'm forgetting it. That's fantastic work for me. Is Capitan Cito. Capitan Cito. Thank you. Um, yeah. I got you. Has has had some really good runs in the past year. Yes. Uh, um, notorious coin box fiend as well. So yeah, uh, we've seen what some of this character can do in more recent times, and I guess we'll see if Gray lives up to that expectation as well. And here's a big thing that uh, Tamana Gil in chat just pointed out: since this is a crew battle, these new players cannot switch their move set. They are locked into their character, and that includes being locked into the moveset here, Weimer, er, which could be a huge potential difference maker. You don't get to switch over to Rainbow Slash here if you're BD Bean, which is Swordfighter's strongest tool in the matchup. So now you have to fight that combo game, fight against mid-range as a character that has a very linear burst, burst against one of the characters that is the best at shutting down, especially with his Time Bomb, Missile, or, and, and Smoke Bomb layout. And maybe being the best at shutting down linear burst in the game. Yeah, I mean you can already tell Gray. Yeah, definitely fine playing with this far away distance. Neutral bees, side bees, down bees to war. All I can see are explosions. It feels like I'm playing Snake again already. Yeah, my friend, and speaking oh. of Snake, Gunner might just be one of that character's worst matchups. But that's a conversation for another time. The pressure right now, the zone of control for Gray is just absolutely absurd, and BB can't even find a way in. Yeah, that side beat doesn't even get back to ledge. That's how far away you were being sent by these projectiles. BD Bean, not having a great time here. I mean, it's hard, right? Like, how do you get in? How do you get through this wall of projectiles when all of your moveset right now, right, your down special, neutral special, well, pretty much everything is just solely geared towards bursting out from that mid range, calming off the shuriken. And in lanes of approach, they're just completely shut down by every button that Gray throws out the answer, my friend. You just put them off stage, you get them in the air where they can't set up, and then, well, it's off to the races. Yeah, BD Bean is doing fantastic work at making openings where any can be found. It's just really good play, even if it's a struggle to get through. And Gray making more and more space with every single button press. And we saw, too, the physical property on some of these projectiles, right? Meaning that they have a hurt box coming down and locking it out for BD Bean. He got disrupted on his approach, just stuffed out, and just like that, getting snuffed out by Gray, who is going to make that game a blink and you'll miss it. Combat between two of our favorite me's. Yep. And then there was one left for Ramapo. It is going to be Vernius. The pit, dark pit, Kirby stepping up to the plate. I will. I, in my heart, in my head of heads, I know we're getting pit here. Most likely regular pit, not dark pit. 
That being said, in my heart of hearts, boy, do I want to see Kirby come out. I think this is a bit of a uh, a bit too dire of a situation to really be playing around too much here. I would be surprised if Vernius did not pull out the uh, the the pit. I think I think that is the safest play we can all go for here. However, if it is Kirby, I will be happily surprised. I I, I think I think Kirby would be the the I believe in the heart of the cards type character. I think. Pit would be the cold and calculated by the numbers pick. And the question is, right, here in a crew battle, how by the numbers do you want to be versus believing in your soul main to truly make it all the way? Yeah, absolutely. I will say a big thing here that I think is probably pushing your decision as well is you're going, you know who you're fighting right now. At least. You don't know necessarily, there is still a toss up between uh, going into Hunter and Sickle. Uh, Snake and Greninja, respectively. In both cases, uh, that is Snake, who plays around his grenade neutral beat, and Greninja, who plays around uh, their water shuriken neutral beat. Both of those are projectiles, and considering you're fighting projectiles to me, I think you probably want to go pit here for the down beat to get that reflector as an option to save you from these characters' game plan. Interesting choice here, locking in the dark pit. The reason I thought we are going to see Pit over Dark Pit is looking at those feature sets. I think both characters do roughly equally against me, Gunner, but I think against some of the other characters we have on the roster, or left, for Ramapo, or sorry, for Rowan, and not knowing exactly who their last character is going to be, I think those extra, those extra arrow mobility could make a huge difference. That being said, Vernie is definitely comfortable here on the Dark Pit and trying to use these distrants, trying to use, use the different tools to find a way in. Gonna get one with the arrow, but just still not able to find a way past this onslaught of explosions. Yeah, you can, as I mentioned, the downbeat did come out. It didn't come out at an instance where it mattered, but good get up there. It's gonna slip around the up smash and still get your forward smash to fire back. Still struggling to really get solid footing here, though. And Weimar, something we haven't talked about enough either, I think, is just how helpful being here on small battlefield truly can be for me, Gunner. Because they have enough space to be able to move around, reset, control space, and create space, right? This isn't a Smashville situation. But what they do have, you know, but they do still have, you know, you're not, there's not enough space, right? Where you can kind of just play outside of that zone they control with those bombs, with those explosions, and reset. And there's no opportunity here for Vernius to control the pace of play, because everywhere you can stand is a minefield. Yeah, and you'll notice as well, me Gunner constantly playing around these platforms. They serve as a good umbrella to slip down under, and they also work pretty well as a nice platform to fire from. Vernius is going to be able to find a stock as we're talking about that too. Tries to go for something fancy there, Gray. I like it. Or sorry, I got mixed up. The other no way worries, around. my swap, friend. Swap the names. Swap the no names. Worries. Yeah, Gray. Gray with that max spacing is absolutely beautiful on the covering. Now trying to find some ledge pressure. Vernius is still trying to find a way in off the bat. Remember that Gray did have two stocks to start this one, but now getting caught at the ledge where Gunner might just be the best character in the entire game. When they're in the advantage state, somehow, although Verdi is still not able to lock it down when you have the reversal situation, once you do finally find that opening, and Gray has been able to live forever, finally getting one off the board, but Verdi is now back against the wall and needs to hold on to the stock here. Yeah, we're seeing a situation where it's very likely Verdi could get pushed to last stock if he does uh, manage to get rid of Gray. And in that instance, I mean, three fresh stocks on a fresh character, that's not going to be fun, but it is possible. I like the up tilt up air, looking for just rack on the damage, not able to find, find the, that air dodge trap after the fact, and without the arrows online that we were talking about before, right, you don't have the ability to pressure Gunner in those situations. So, oh, we're going to see Greg get back for free, blow up the stock, and as you mentioned, Weimar, we're going to force Vernius now to Ramapo's last stock of this crew battle. Yeah, Vernius playing pretty hard on the back foot here, does have the percent lead. It looks likely that we will at least see Grey go, but you're going to have to lock in really hard on this last stock to make sure you get full value out of it. You have to take four. I don't think anyone has successfully taken 
more than four in this crew battle so far. It's been very back and forth. Uh, we saw Sauce take more than four, my friend. But other than that, you're absolutely right. We've had this B A table back and forth, back and forth. And Verdi is going to pull uh, us to one more game. Three stocks left for Rowan. One sock left for Ramapo. Oh, you're not out of this one yet, but you gotta dig deep. You gotta find the three stock on your opponent when they can only get one. Yeah. We've got a pair of options potentially on the table here for Rowan Gold. We've got either Hunter the Snake Player or Sickle the Greninja. Uh, if you're Ramapo, you are hoping that Hunter is that last player. I think I am inclined to agree with you. Snake Pit, I mean, Snake is kind of known as the even character for Smash Ultimate. Pretty much every character in the game is even into Snake. Uh, people who say otherwise on their tier lists are lying to you. You should have that known. But it is going to be the special agent mm -hmm. stepping up to the table. Hunter going to be the one to close things out. Yeah. And the reason I like that, like Dark Pit, Better than regular pit here against Snake, just by a little bit of a margin, because your arrows can actually knock them off of Cypher, right? That extra knockback, that extra damage does do make all the difference here. Plus, you've got the reflectors on side special and the sh and the that your or your orbital shield, so you have have great ways to disrupt Snake's nest, find ways in, plus the back air, plus all the CQC pressure to contest him, right? But at but. As you mentioned that it's even, it's all about that initial lead. Like, can Vernius find the first stock? Or, well, I guess there is no not having that initial There's, lead yeah. because, yeah. It's a, There's it, no it's first stock here, one. it's only stock. Can Vernius find the three stock? Let's find out together. <laughs> yeah. Starting off a little cold with that uh, side B, definitely not the button you were trying to go for there. But Hunter immediately recovering from that. And already and utilizing the landing animation. I was gonna say utilizing the landing animation to find a way underneath those grenades. Heads up play from Vernius. Utilizing the multiple jumps, just trying to keep Snake questioning on these nests, racking up the damage. And this is something too that I don't think we've talked on. We, we haven't really brought up in this matchup. You mentioned it's even, but with three stocks to one, on, on ironically, Hunter can kind of just run at you, hold grenade, and just take trades on every interaction. You'll be at kill percent by the time he loses his first stock. Right. Worst case scenario, you never get a hit in and you only get trades with these grenades on the multi-hits. By the time you're on your last stock, Vernius will absolutely be at death's door and you only need one good up tilt from there. Mm -hmm. Hunter can play around these stocks so well that it doesn't really matter how this first stock goes. You can be a little bit more, a little bit more careless with it. And that, uh, uh, that C4 there could have been death. Hunter had the potential for a double jump up there to lock that one out there and then, but just not able to find it. So instead, it's going to be Vernius able to reset to neutral. But there's that grenade damage we were talking about before. The ult tilt going to come out, catching you from seven from so far away. And Vernius just feels like that one was absolutely ridiculous. Hunter can't believe it either. And I'm, I mean... We, we saw what happened there. Up tilt caught just at the edge of the platform. Vernius dashed off, but threw a move back forward. It looked like the hand and the head just kind of barely stuck itself out into the leg. And we'll see it right here. Er, watch what happens here. Yep, just runs off, throws out a back air. And the back air yeah. hurt box shift turns you sideways, sticks your just the tips of your fingers out into the up tilt, and that's all it needs. Boy, does it look ridiculous, though. Just enough of a uh, just enough of a reach back, you were able to hit it there. But when both characters go into that hit stun animation, they both just kind of return to this neutral state of this, and it you can't tell what what even happened. But yeah, snake up tilt, beast of a move. It's a nerf move, by the way, for those who don't remember what it was like in Brawl. But that's what it does best: and, kill and people a little bit randomly before three point one. Yeah, it, it's been nerfed a bit, is what we're getting at here. But it's still. A beast of a move, and it's going to be what gets Hunter and the rest of Rowan the win over uh, the wonderful attempt run uh, by the opposing team there. And, you know, this is what we were talking about earlier, Weimer, right? It's not about who your best player is, because I think BDB, right, many would say, is just by himself better than the players on Rowan Gold's roster. But Rowan had the depth, right? Start to finish, they were just 
plodding forward by slow and steady, taking stocks and building an advantage. Sauce in the middle managed to open to crack things wide open for them, and even though BDB managed to claw things back quite a bit. It just wasn't enough. Beautiful stuff from both teams. And I'm really excited to see what we're rumbling forward with next. But first, I believe we have some words from the people who make this all happen. I think we do. We'll see if they pop up here in just a moment for us to read them. Possibly not. We might right, We might just be going to break. We might just be going. We are just waiting on words from production, but uh, until then, I gotta hang out with my incredibly fantastic co-caster. How's it going, Weimer? It's going. You know, it's going. I'm on the move right now. I've got a bit of a scuffed setup. Uh, my microphone, as you can see here, is not attached to a stand. It is instead resting on a Blue Yeti box, of all things. Because that's what I had sitting around that's roughly the height of a microphone stand. I'm, I'm deeply impressed. I'm deeply impressed. This is what we do for the love of the game, for those who want to know what it's like. There we go. And you know what else we do for the love of the game, my friend? We go to start.gg slash collision and we register for as a spectator for one of the best tournaments that's going to be out there. We talked about some of those players before, but we've also got Mars making his return to majors after King Kong, Tweak, Aklo, DeBuzz, Magi, Riddles, SkyJ, Big Boss, Zuppy, and so many more. March 15th to 17th, we're only two weeks away. Don't miss out on what's going to be the battle of heroes and villains like you've never seen before over in Persephone, New Jersey. Yep, and it is run by what else but the channel we're currently on, Collision Series, Events, Production, and Content, as they put it. They're a fantastic esports group. I've worked with them multiple times. Obviously, I'm working with them right now. You can catch their, you catch their socials. You're on their Twitch right now, Collision Series TV. Uh, if you want live event updates on Twitter, that would be Collision Smash. And over on YouTube, Collision Series for all the VODs that you missed at every tournament you weren't able to get to. And speaking of every single Monday, Weimer, if you like what the Collision does on a bigger scale, you're going to like what they do on a smaller scale, you should head on down to Valway every Monday to check out not only a full, an amazing Smash local, but also a full slate of arcade games at your disposal. Fusion truly does it like nobody else in the business, and there are a few better ways to spend a Monday night. So go ahead over to start.gg slash Fusion and register for this week's local today. And if you like locals, we've also got Xeno Weeklies for you, run by the wonderful people over at House of 3000. That's over in New York, New York. Uh, every Wednesday, it's venue fees, $8, entry fee of $7. Easy to get into, easy to hang out with, plenty of people there. You can watch that over at House of 3000's Twitch channel uh, or Smash.Series. Is that what you said it was? Uh, Smash.Stream. Smash dot stream. Yeah, if you, you want, gotta... if you want an entirely unique viewing experience, you can go over there to catch every house of the stream. This is this is what Devin told me. If Smash dot stream does not work, it does work, y'all. I just tested it in chat. I found this out this last weekend. It absolutely works, and that is frankly. I believe Impressive. the kids say these days, very cool. That being said, speaking of very cool, we've got some more cool crews for you in just a minute, but we're going to have a quick break, and we will be right back. Thank you. It's gonna be Vernius, able to reset to neutral, but there's that grenade damage we were talking about before. The ult is gonna come out, catching you from seven, from so far away, and Vernius just feels like that one was absolutely ridiculous. Hunt to find it, so instead, it's gonna be Vernius, able to reset to neutral, but there's that grenade damage we were talking about before. The ult is gonna come out, catching you from seven, from so far away, and Vernius just feels like that one was absolutely ridiculous. Hunt to find it, so 